Jason is with us in Columbia, South Carolina. Hi, Jason. How are you? Hey, Dave. I'm doing great. How you been? Better than I deserve. What's up? Uh, Dave, I've got a question for you. I don't think I've ever heard you answer it, but I know that you teach that uh, when it comes to investments, you're big on mutual funds as well as paid-for investment property. Yes. Uh, when it comes to a paid-for investment property, uh, it could take me a significant time to save 100000 plus for, say, a duplex or a townhome, uh, but it could take me significantly less time to save up to pay for a condo to use as a rental property. How do you feel about that? What's, what's your take on, on something that would have a regime fee to it uh, and that might cost a little bit less but would be in a good location? I own a couple of condos. They're fine. Um, the thing you want to look for here is, is this. Uh, of equal price in an equal neighborhood, in other words, if you're going to buy a $100,000 condo or a $100,000 house in the same neighborhood, same within a mile radius kind of thing, uh, on average, the single family is probably going to go up more in value. Now, a well-placed condo will obviously go up faster than a bad neighborhood single family you follow me yes and, and so condos are fine you just have to think about what you're getting into and obviously you have to look at what the hoa dues are going to be the condo fees are going to be is the condo association being managed well and uh that's probably that and the neighborhood are the two biggest concerns i have when i'm buying a condo because a lot of condo associations are very poorly managed and if they don't keep up the maintenance and they don't keep a certain percentage of the complex to be uh, owner occupied versus rental, you'll lose the condo association or the condo complex will lose the ability to get normal permanent financing. And if they can't get FHA or VA financing in there or, or, or conventional financing in there, then the values are going to drop like a rock because you only got cash buyers and investor buyers at that point. And uh, so you just got to watch and make sure that they're managing their ratios of home owners of owners, owner occupied versus tenants, and that they're that they're doing the maintenance and they're properly managing the uh, the, the the finances of, of the condo association. But if you've done that, which doesn't take long to do, you just call the management company and uh, you know get the realtor that's involved if it's listed to look at and and pull up the. Uh, you know, the documentation, most of the time it's public. It's not hard to get a hold of uh, from the management company on how, you know, what are the reserves for roof? What are the reserves for paint and parking lot? And are they collecting enough to pay their bills? And are they paying their bills? Then you look back up and start looking at it and go, okay, if I drove up in this thing and I was a buyer, is this a, is this a condo project I want to have my wife in? Do I want to live in here? And, um, or, or would a normal, reasonable person want to live in here? And, and if the answer is yes, then you probably got a good, solid condo complex, and it's fine to do. Uh, my son-in-law, Winston, runs all of our real estate, and he does some investing on his own, and he bought a condo the other day as an investment. So um, they're fine, and um, you just don't want to get a junky one and one that's, that's poorly run, that the management's poorly run. Those two things will make you wish you didn't. But other than that, I'm fine with it. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button to get the latest content and check out these other great clips from the show. And so you have to break the cycle. You have to flip this thing on its head and make it behave. You've got to get so fired up and wired up that your broke friends think you've lost your mind.